not reply. Some people can be that serious. The different things that happen. So that happens. He's always, always, always faithful to God for the glory. I'm going to give us six areas that we can give God's faithfulness. And, um, and then we will talk about how we can grow so that we can continue to experience God's faithfulness and then get God's reward. All right? I know everybody in the house knows what faithfulness means. If I ask you what is faithfulness, you can tell me. Faithfulness just means being tight, being trustworthy, being, being reliable. You know, there's a song we sing here, dependable, dependable God. He can depend on God. He doesn't change. He doesn't care. He has no reason to lie. Whatever he has said, he will do. If only we can hold on to that as we go on to the issue of prayer. Just talk to God, say, how am I with God? How is it going? Meanwhile, there were so many people ahead of her that didn't know how to talk to God. But so if we can just hold on in him and talk, he will talk to us. Real quick, six areas that we can prove that God is faithful. And if, as we speak, as we are talking, think about it in your own life and give God the glory. The first area, God is always, always faithful to his word. God is always faithful to his word. The Bible is a compilation of his word. Look into the Bible, look for the word that God speaks. You know, there are some things we read them today and they jump out at you. They speak to you, they minister to you. That is God's word for your life. So just look for those things. God is always faithful to his word. If you, um, let's look at Isaiah 55, verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 11. I don't know if it's on choir by now. Okay, fine. If the new year can keep that up for us. Isaiah 55, verse 11. All it says is, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It will accomplish that whereunto I have sent it. So if you have a word of God that you're holding on to, Hold on to it in this year. Keep on reminding it. It's in the Bible somewhere where it says, come, let us reason together. Keep on reminding God about that word that he has spoken in his word that he has ministered to you. And he will bring it to pass. You know, the Bible tells us the story of Sarah. And like many of us, Sarah got married to her husband. You know? And she thought that, ah, okay, now we are married. The next thing, after all, God said, be fruitful and multiply. The next thing, the children will come. The children will come. The children will come. Well, she waited and waited. Years came. Years went. At some point, she didn't even believe that it would happen for her again. She gave her handmaid. She didn't believe, but God kept his word to her. God kept his word to her. Can somebody say that? God kept his word. God kept his word to her. He did. And so is God because he doesn't change. He will keep his word to us. And that's not just in the Bible alone. Today, in our current society, if you think about it, we can remember people. People who have gone through similar experiences. They waited years on end and thought this would never happen to me. And in the fullness of time, at God's own appointed time, which is always the right time, it happened for them. The Lord gave them a song. The Lord gave them a testimony. I know all of us can remember Pastor and Mrs. Bancoli. After so many years, how the Lord did it for them. I have personal friends, and I know we I'm sure everybody in this house has a friend like that, that waited for years, for years. And when they're like, I have a friend, she, so many years, at 15 years of my, said, it's enough, I'm not doing again. He's God, if he wants to, let him remember me. If he doesn't, I will be happy. I'm tired of worrying about this. Before that 15th year ended of her marriage, she had her child. God is faithful. God is, some of you are waiting on God for different things. One of the things I keep praying for is a small, you know, a small thing, a small side thing to do. I have a wonderful job, but a small side hustle. That's what my children call it, small side hustle. And that side hustle, you know, you say small, something small. So it's taking forever to come, but it's okay. At God's good time, at his appointed time, that is when it will come. Some of us are looking to the Lord, how about me? Why? What about me? I want my own. Even um, in the Bible, if we read, Abraham was worried for his son. He was worried for his son. I want a wife from... So he gave all the specs he wanted for his son. God did it for him. As he wanted it, God did it for him. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. So let me encourage us. That is one area we can prove God in our lives. Think about the word that God has given to you. For you to know the word God has given to you, you must be studying the word. And you must have knowledge of the word. So there is a responsibility on our part. So that is one way we can prove God. God's faithfulness in our lives. You know, the Bible says, test and see that the Lord is good. So these things we're talking about, they're personal things. You have to test them to be able to testify about them. 
God's word. God's promise. If God has made a promise to you, he is faithful and he will bring it to pass. If God has made a promise, let us look at, um, let us look at Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There are so many things out there that we do not know. Things that will become a miracle, things that will become the breakthrough for us. We get to a point in our lives, like Moses did when he was in that, um, when he was by the, the, the bitter waters. They were looking for water. They finally found water. The water was bitter. The people were complaining. Moses was worried. But Moses knew what to do. He knew what to do. He called on the Lord. He called on the Lord. And the Lord showed him. A tree right there by him was the answer. That tree take a branch, throw it in the water, the water became sweet. I'm saying to everybody in this house, myself included, if there's anything bitter in our lives as we are sitting down here, give it to the Lord. Hand it to the Lord. The Lord himself will make it sweet for us in the name of Jesus. Even as it turned the bitter waters of Mara to sweet waters, whatever is bitter in our lives today, in the name of Jesus, we will come back with a testimony about how God himself turned it to sweet waters for us. That will be our testimony. That will be our song. So we can, we can prove God by his promise. That was his promise. Call on me and I will show you. And he did that. He did it for Moses. He showed him something that became a, a new thing for him. And that helped him to experience his own victory. Now, God is faithful to our position. You know, the one thing, one of the things about God is God is so, he's such a, he's such a gentle man, for lack of a better word to say, that God gives us a choice. We have a choice. God says, choose you this day whom you will serve. We have a choice if we want to follow or we don't want to follow. So, but if we choose to follow God, if we choose to be on God's side, if we choose to stand for the Lord, the Lord will be faithful unto us. The Lord will not leave us alone. We can always remember that. Think about the three Hebrew boys. They did, it's not that they didn't go into the fire. They went into the fire. But the Lord was with them in the fire. The Lord brought them out of the fire and therein was their testimony and so i'm asking us in the house today what is our position where do we stand are we standing on the lord's side or are we standing on the side of the society sometimes the society is not on the lord's side you know many of us can can testify about that so many things that the lord has said these things are not right see when i was a little girl growing up i grew up in nigeria there was a part of lagos they called it campus square and that campus square, um, you had to pass by it to go from my grandma to another of her friend's house that we often went to. But in that campus square was known for boys that would stay there and be smoking weed. They called them in my language, Aomamubo. My grandmother would never let us go by there because those were bad boys. Boys you didn't want to be around. They were not good for nothing boys. Like what they call area boys now. But today we live in a society that is legalizing weed. Today we live in a society that says there's nothing wrong with smoking weed. There are some states we go to where weed is legal. Just like you smoke cigarettes, you smoke weed. And we know that these things are not good for us. Now, whose side are we on? As a Christian, are you going to say, ah, if I sell this weed, I can make so much money? Which is what some people are doing. Are you going to go into that because of the money you can make, because of the business opportunity? Or are you going to stand on the Lord's side? The Bible says the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. Why must we give up the word of the Lord? Why must we forget the word of the Lord because we are looking for money? No matter what we are going through, no matter what is going on, if we stand on the Lord's side, believing in the Lord, trusting in the Lord, holding on to him, the Lord will be faithful unto us. He will give us a new song. He will give us a testimony. He will fight for us. But we have to have the courage. We have to make the choice that we're going to stand with the Lord. So that's another area we can prove the Lord. We've said through now, we can prove him through his word. We can, through him by, we can prove him by his promises. And we can prove him by the position, the stance we ourselves take. When we think of God's faithfulness, like we said this morning, God is so, so faithful in protecting us. Everybody here can testify to that. The fact that you're here this morning, Shows that God has been protecting you. You know, you drove from your home to the church. 
You've been driving from your home to work. You've been driving from work to other places. God has been faithful in protecting. As the mountains surround about Jerusalem, God has given his angels charge over you. He's protected you. He's protected that which belongs to you. Even the things that you live alone. Many of us leave our children. They're in school for so long. We may not even see them for a week. God has been faithful in keeping them. Even we ourselves. God has been faithful in keeping us. That is just the way God is. You know, and, um, God um, said it. He said he will give his angels charge over you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. This is the word of God. He's faithful to the end in protecting us as long as we stand within him. You know, um, the devil told God, the devil, um, yeah, the devil told God, he said, how can I come and um, get to Job when you have put your, what was it now? Your hedge of protection around him. He told God, he said, if you take down your hedge, then I'll be able to reach him. There is a hedge of God that is around us. There is a hedge of God that is around our loved ones. There is a hedge of God that is around everything that, that belongs to the Lord. So let us commit ourselves unto the Lord. Let us look up to him. Let us hold on to him. Because he will be faithful in protecting us. And th therein will we have our testimony. God is faithful in protecting us. One of the um, things that I like to prove God with is forgiveness. How many of us can sit here and say we have not sinned? Huh? The Bible says if we say that we have not sinned, we're a liar, the truth is not in us. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If God were to judge, how many of us would be able to stand? We all sin. You know, there are some things we call white lies, small lies. There's no white lie in the throne before God. A lie is a lie. That's all God. That God said, thou shalt not lie. Period. Thou shalt not steal. Whether it is small or it is, you know, when I was um, teaching, we had some, we had those children, they will say to you sometimes, well, I mean, there's something called finders keepers. I didn't steal it. I found it, so I'm keeping it. There's nothing like finders keepers. Though. Finders keepers is stealing. If it doesn't belong to you and you take it, it's stealing. That is a sin. That is a sin. You know, the, some of the little things we do when we sit down with our girls, we sit down with our guys, and we're gossiping. We're backbiting. We're saying malicious things about other people. That is sin. That is sin. Many of us think as long as I'm not, I, mean, I haven't killed somebody, as long as I'm not committing fornication, committing adultery, as long as I'm not, you know, the big ones, I'm not sinning. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. Bible, to, um, pastor taught us so well about the strife of tongues. When we go ahead of ourselves, go and be trying to spoil somebody else. Saying all kinds of things. That, that is the strife of tongues. God hates it. That is the sin. That is the sin. All of us sin in different ways every day. Different manners of sins we all commit. Every day. Yet, God is faithful. Yet, God is faithful. He keeps forgiving us. We commit the sin. Sometimes we remember, we remember the sin and we say, Ah, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. He's God now. He's good. He will forgive us. There are even some sins that we commit. That the Bible says there are those sins that doth easily beset us. We don't even know they are sins anymore. So when we get with our girls and we begin to do what we call gisting, or we get with our boys and we begin to drink, they are sinning. But they, they have so easily beset us, we don't even realize they are sins anymore. But they are sins. And through all of this, God continues to forgive us. God continues to cleanse us. You know, the Bible says, while we were yet in sin, God sent Jesus Christ to come and die for us. Oh, has anybody experienced God's forgiveness of sin in their lives? If you've experienced the forgiveness of God in your life, just shout a big thank you, G thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's forgiven us on every side. Ah, he's forgiven us. Hmm. And this is one of the areas that we know that God is faithful. Because we know, if we are honest, we know that we sin. We continue to sin, yet he continues to forgive us. You know, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those are the sins that we confess. How about the sins that we do not confess? And what is so bad about sin is that the Bible tells us in Isaiah 59, it says that your iniquities have separated you. So it is those little sins that we commit. Those sins that we just, you know, Carelessly, we keep on committing. They're the things that are separating us from God. They're the things that God cannot behold. The Bible says God's eyes are pure. 
they cannot behold iniquity. So the more we are committing sins, some of them we don't even know. It's separating us. Separating us. Separating us from God. But if we go back to the book of Genesis, God tells, the Bible tells us that God loves us. He wants to have fellowship with us. And so even though God will come down in the morning or in the evening to come and have fellowship with his, creature, with his creature, with Adam and Eve, to come and have fellowship with us. So even though our sins continue to separate us from God, God loves us still. God wants to have fellowship with us. God wants to be in our lives, wants to be an active part of our lives. So what did God do about that? What did God do about that? He cannot, he cannot forsake us. We are the work of his hands. He loves us too much. And so God sent his only begotten son. Before we were born at all, before we were created, God already had a plan. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us. He sent Jesus Christ to come into this world that he will bear the sins of the world and will set us free. And so Jesus Christ is the gift of God that has come to take away sin and to make us whole. Can somebody be encouraged this morning and say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Um, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to come forth, to come and die, to come and clean the world, to come and rid us of our sins. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so we need to rejoice. We can be happy. We can be thankful about that. For we know that our sins that are many, they are no longer separating us from God. Our sins that are many, they're no longer creating a barrier between us and God. Because Jesus came. Because Jesus came. He took away all this. The Bible says that when Jesus gave up the ghost, the veil that was, between, that was covering the Holy of Holies, that veil tore from the top to the bottom. So that we will be able to come boldly, directly to God. This is because Jesus died that we can say God is our Father. So Jesus Christ is the gift of God that came into the world to take away our sins to help us, make us whole, that we will, we will be able to continue going before God and continue to experience the faithfulness of God even in our lives. That is what it is. I know right now Christmas is coming. We're all getting ready to celebrate Christmas. Many of us have gone out, bought all kinds of gifts, all manners of gifts, wrapped them up pretty, put them under the trees for our children. And that is fine because that is what God did too. It's just that Jesus Christ is not under the tree. The Bible says that Jesus Christ ever liveth to make intercession for us. So while you will buy gifts for your children, they will play with it for three months, then put it aside. Jesus Christ is always, always, always. In oh, please let us clap for the Lord this morning. Let us thank God for Jesus. Because he ever liveth to make intercession for us. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the one that came to save us. So Jesus Christ came. He saved us from all our sins. Saved us from all our iniquities. Brought us closer to God. Jesus Christ is also our hope of glory. So as we continue living our lives, because Jesus Christ has come and has gone ahead of us, we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be worried because we know that Jesus is interceding for us. Jesus is helping us. He is praying for us. The Holy Spirit is with us and we know that because they are with us and ahead of us, it is bound to be well with us. Jesus Christ is the gift of God that continues living to make intercession for us. Jesus Christ is the gift of God that continues living to make it easier for us, that continues living to help us, to make a way for us that we can continue to navigate, continue to move forward, continue to get closer to God. And even when the accuser of the brethren, there's a song the choir sings, when the accuser of the brethren begins to want to, to show God, begins to want to accuse us, oh, this is what this one has done, this is, where that, this is what that one has done, the blood of Jesus, it fights for us. The blood of Jesus, it speaks for, for us. The blood of Jesus continues to make, it continues to avail. That's what the Bible, continues to avail for us. And so we thank God, even at this Christmas time. I don't want us to be worried or to be upset. Oh, I didn't get this goal. I didn't get that goal. I didn't, my job didn't come through for me. My little side hustle is not yet a reality. My, all of those things are nothing. We can, be, we can be excited because Jesus has come. We can be excited because we know that as we enter into 2020 and beyond, Jesus has even gone ahead of us. And we know that even as he has gone ahead of us, what is it? He's making a way for us. Doors, new doors will be open unto us. 
new visions, new messages will we receive. And we know that as we continue to go, it is bound to be better for us tomorrow than it is today to the glory of the living God. That is what Jesus has come to do. That is God's plans for I mean, That is what God, God plans for us. I believe it's Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says that I know the plans that I have for you, the thoughts I have for you. They're good thoughts. Thoughts to prosper you, to give you hope and an expected end. That our end will be good. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter that difficulty you're going through. I'm speaking to my, my, my friend who, whose husband was buried yesterday. The Bible says all things work together for good. All things work together for good. Right now, there is a covering. There is a mist. We cannot see because we are focused on what hasn't happened. We are focused on that difficulty we are walking through. But in the fullness of time, when God reveals it to us, we will find that indeed all things work together for good. And that is when we will be able to really say, to God be the glory. I do not believe that is everything that we can say thank you God for. Because I don't know how she will ever be able to say thank you. I'm happy that my husband died. I don't think she will ever be able to say that. But I know God will take her to a place where she will be able to say, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Because it's not our way. It's not our ways. It's not what we want. It's what God wants for us. And so we give God, in all things, God will give us the grace to be able to give him the glory. Because our God is always faithful. Our God is always faithful. You know, when we talk about God being always faithful, there is a story that I just love out of the Bible. And I don't know if, um, well, it's, it's the story of Moses. It's found in Genesis, Genesis 24. Not Moses, Abraham. Genesis 24. Abraham was looking for a wife for his son. I think we, we, we alluded to that earlier. He was getting old. His wife had died. He, wanted, he had a, a, a real desire for his son to marry a certain type of person. So he called the head of his household, Eliezer, and sent Eliezer to go where he wanted, wanted him to go to go look for a wife for his son. Eliezer said, but what if I go and, you know, it doesn't work out the way you want it to, to work out. Abraham told him, he said, if the media will pro pro project it for us, and I believe it's Genesis 24, Genesis 24 verse 40. I think that's what it is. Genesis 24, verse 40. Do you have that? Okay, and this is Eliezer repeating what he said. Look at what he said. He said, this is Abraham talking to Eliezer. He said, the God before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. Can somebody say that? The God before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. You have, he hasn't even begun the journey, but he knows his God so well. He knows that his God is ever so faithful that he could tell Eliezer that, go on, the God that I serve, the God that I work with, he will send his angel before you, and that angel will prosper your way so that you will just go there and you will just get what you're looking for because that angel has gone to prosper the way. Can I tell someone in this house this day? Can I tell someone? That as we are looking forward to 2020 and beyond, as we're marching into 2020 and beyond, the angel of the Most High God has gone ahead of us. Yeah. The angel of the Most High God has gone ahead of us and has already prospered our way in the name of Jesus. So let's be encouraged. Let's be encouraged. Tell somebody next to you. Tell them, the angel of God has gone ahead of you and your way will be prosperous. Tell the person behind you, because I'm still seeing some faces that are not smiling, that the angel of God is prospering your way. Yes, 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 we need to be encouraged. You see David now? When the Amalekites came and thought they had finished David, David, what, what could David do? Because they had indeed almost finished him. David went back and encouraged himself in the Lord. So we need to encourage ourselves. We need to tell ourselves, it doesn't matter what today has. All I know is next year, oh, that angel of the most high God, hey, he has gone ahead. And he will make my way prosperous in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He will make my way prosperous. That is not to say that 2019 is over. Oh, because if you read your Bibles and you read the story of Caleb, you will see in the Bible where Caleb, was made, a promise was made to him many, many years ago. And then at the age of 85, when you say 85, you are thinking of an old person. Because at that age of 85, that Caleb now went to Joshua and said, 
Give me my mountain. Not even ordinary ground like this. So mountain. 85, give me my mountain. You know, mountain is work. You have to really work hard to get to the top of the mountain. That 85, he was asking for that mountain. So let somebody be encouraged. If God has given you a word that it will happen for you in 2019, hold on to it. Ask him for your mountain. Because when Caleb asked for that mountain at age 85, he got his mountain. He got his mountain. So 2019 is not yet over. And we do not know what God will do, even in these remaining, remaining 17 days. So be encouraged. You know, live... You know, go around with, uh, with the spring in your step. Be encouraged because God is still able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above what we can think or ask. We might be looking at it as though this year is over. Nothing can happen again. Hey, don't do that though. If Caleb could get his mountain at 85, anything, anything at all can still happen Amen. for the glory of our Lord's name. Amen. So we bless the name of the Lord. So now we're talking about God's faithfulness. We thank God for the faithfulness we've experienced thus far. But we're looking forward to higher heights, to greater faithfulness. How can we continue to experience God's faithfulness? Um, we're just going to write this down real quick because we're going to pray. How can we continue to experience God's faithfulness? Some things we need to keep on doing to experience. When, um, so this will just be like steps to continue experiencing God's faithfulness. One, how many of us remember that song? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, if you want to grow. That's it. That's why, <laughs> we're running short on time. That's why, um, that's why Abraham could say the God that I serve. Because he knew that God. He read his Bible. Even Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God. Bible tells us Jesus will, will, will withdraw to a quiet place. He will withdraw to the mountain to spend time in praying. When Jesus went to pray, came back, his disciples were sleeping. Jesus said, couldn't you watch with me one hour? Eh? So we need to pray. We need to spend time studying the word of God, praying and growing in the word of God. That is how we can have our own testimony. Because that's how we will continue to, to know God more. So one, we read our Bibles and we pray every day. Second thing we need to do to continue to have a testimony. It's a very simple thing. The Bible says, forsake not the gathering of the saints. Many of us, something is happening. The first thing, I'm not going to church again. For too long, I've been praying. It's not happening. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to house fellowship. I'm not. Get... That is exactly what the enemy wants. He wants us to drop off, to drop off the boat and fall down. You know, it's, it's like a tree. Once a branch falls off from that tree, it may still be green and luscious. In a matter of time, that branch is going to die. So we can't afford to do that. We have to continue. Even sometimes we may not feel like going, but we have to encourage ourselves, drag ourselves there. And as we drag ourselves there, God will give us a word. God will give us strength. A friend, a sister will say something to us that will encourage us. So we can't afford to forsake the gathering of the saints. The second thing. The third thing we have to do, evangelize, tell people. The woman that was brought, um, that Jesus met, that met Jesus at the well, she didn't know Jesus. But by the time Jesus said things to her, she had no choice but to go and tell other people. So tell people about this God that you know. Encourage people about what this God is doing in your life. Just as you tell people, you will find that you are awakening, awakening that faith in yourself. Tell people about God. Tell people about God. The other thing, the fourth thing that I have down is give. You know, God loved us so much. Even though we were in sin and the sin was covering us, was covering God from us, God now gave his son that nothing will stand between him and us. And that's why we are free. It's not by our works. It's by the gift of God. It's by the grace of God. In like manner, let us give. Sometimes what you have to give is a word in season, a kind word to somebody. Sometimes what you have to give is a smile to somebody who is hurting. But give. Give from the depths of your heart. Give cheerfully. And if you have resources, because the Lord will bless us all. When the Lord blesses and our resources come up, let us give to the work of God. You see, I can talk to you here and I can stand here and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one, but the money that I give can go and touch a heart in China, can go and touch a life in Russia, can go and so give, give to the word of to the work of God. And as you give, God will remember because the Bible says that He's the one that, that, uh, that will come and reward us. The Bible says our labors will not be forgotten by Him. So give. That's how we can continue to grow and experience God's faithfulness. Those are the, the main things that we have to do to continue to grow so that we can continue to have testimonies of God's faithfulness. Has God been good to somebody in this house today? Has anybody been blessed by this word this day? Has it been a word in season for somebody today? And I pray that the Lord will continue to have his way in our lives all the days of our lives. 
we are going to take two prayer points. We are going to take two prayer points. If you will please rise up, let's take two prayer points. The very first prayer point. God loved us so much. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come. Jesus is now the gift that continues to give. Jesus is the gift that has become a blessing to the world. And so I want us to pray that in my life, oh God, let Jesus be real. The Bible talks about us being conformed to the image of Christ. I want us to pray that, Father, let my life be a sacrifice unto you. Let my life be conformed to the image of Christ. Not what I want, but what you want for me, O oh God. Father, help me to grow in the image of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Pray that the Lord will help you. That you will be more and more like Jesus. Pray that God will live on the inside of us. And he will help us to love as Jesus loved. He will help us to walk as Jesus walked. He will help us to have faith, even as Jesus did. Pray that the Lord who is real, the God who continues to give, the God who liveth ever to make intercession for us. Pray that he will make intercession for us. Pray that your life will be worthy, will be useful in God's hands. Pray that your life will not be your own, but it will be useful. That God will use you as an instrument. God will use you as a gift to other people. That God will bless you, that out of your own blessings, you will bless others for the glory for the praise and for the honor of the Most High God. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Be exalted forever, O oh God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Second prayer point I want us to take. I want us to remember Abraham and the angel of God that went before him and how his mission became a success. And I want you to speak from the depths of your heart this morning. I want you to commit the coming year into the hands of the Lord. I want you to begin to thank God for the success of next year for you. Abraham had a particular need he had, and he brought that need before the Lord. If you have a particular need, see Hannah, when she went and prayed, Hannah had been going to Shiloh for so many years, we don't know what was happening, but that year she went, this is what she prayed for. The Lord made it to be her testimony. The angel of the Lord has gone before us. I want us to pray. If there is one need, commit it to the Lord. Whatever it may be, ask the Lord that his angel will go ahead of you. That thing will become a testimony for you. And you will come back even with thanksgiving unto the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal Excellency, we thank you. King of all kings, Lord of all lords, we thank you. We thank you for you are the God that has the earth and the fullness and the palm of your hands. We thank you for you are the one that sends angels, even mainstream angels, that sends angels to go ahead of us. We thank you for your angel has gone into 2020 before us. We thank you for your angel, O oh God, will give us good success on every side in 2020. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for there will be blessings in 2020 that will glorify your name, that will praise you. We thank you for protection in 2020. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for new visions in 2020. We thank you, Lord God, for good health in 2020. We thank you for you will rebuke the devourer for us even in the year 2020. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, oh God. For your angel has gone ahead of us, King of glory. And 2020 will bring us good news. 2020 will bring us glad tidings. And through 2020, we will continue to praise to glorify and to magnify your holy name. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're running short on time now. You know, in the book of um, Revelation 12, 11, it says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. My prayer for us this morning is that indeed, God who has gone ahead of us, God who has sent his angel ahead of us, he alone will give us a testimony. Because we need that testimony to overcome. And I also pray that in all things and in all ways, even this house that we are in, God will give this our house, this our church, City of David, new testimonies in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If the, if the, if the, if the media can, can project um, 1 Thessalonians 5.24 in the International Standard Version, 1 Thessalonians 5.24 in the International Standard Version. I want us to just read that one more time and then we'll close with that. 1 Thessalonians, no, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, International Standard Version. Okay. So 1 Thessalonians 5, um, International Standard Version says, um, it says, faithful, he who calls you is faithful and he will continue to be faithful. He who calls you is faithful and he will continue to be faithful. I want you to turn to your neighbor 
and encourage that person and say to that person, he who calls you is faithful and he will continue to be faithful to you. Amen. Amen. And now I want you to point at yourself and I want you to put, instead of you to say me, I want you to say he who calls me is faithful and he will continue to be faithful to me. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Eternal Excellency, we thank you for today. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for your word. The Bible says that the entrance of your word brings understanding, brings light and understanding to the simple. Father, Lord God, we pray that your word that has gone forth, O God, will indeed bring understanding to us and will indeed be light unto us. We pray, Father, Lord God, that as we go forth, that your word will continue to do us good. Give us new testimonies every day, O God. Help us to see and experience your faithfulness every day, O God, that we will continue to rejoice in you and we will continue to praise your holy name. Blessed be your name forever, O God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I pray that I hope that somebody will.